Good evening, friends, and shalom from Brit Hadashah, which means the New Covenant in Sydney, Australia. I trust you will enjoy our first virtual Shabbat service with uh, a short Kiddush and then a Drust teaching by our Messianic teacher, Paul Cohen. If you need to know more about us, please follow us on BC sydney.com the normal w's in front zelda may i ask you to light the candles for us shabbat shalom everybody baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. Anu madnekim narot shal shabbat v'shem Yeshua hamashiach. Sa shalom o haolam. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. We light these Shabbat lights in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, Prince of Peace, Light of the World. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless us with your presence. Enlighten our eyes with your light and your truth, just as we light these Shabbat candles before you. And so make a spirit of trust and love dwell in our homes and in community. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Yeshua. He has come to bless the whole world, to be a light to the nations. Amen. Amen. Please say this uh, with us. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Purei Puri Hagathem. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who brings forth fruit of the vine. Amen. We continue the uh, Kiddush by saying, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us in your word, and who has taken pleasure in us, and in love and mercy has given us the Shabbat, a reminder regarding creation. It is the first amongst our days of sacred assembly, recalling the exodus from Egypt. You have chosen us and sanctified us from amongst all peoples, and in love you have granted us your Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Please say this with us. Baruch atah Adonai Elheinu Melech HaOlam Hamotzi Lechem Men Hares. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. And we will sing a medieval Jewish prayer, Adon Alam, Lord of the Universe. Adon Olam 
אשר מלאך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נסע לחף צוקול לזן הלב שמו נקרא ועד חרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובד והוא יהיה בתדרה ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה והוא היה והוא עובד בתפארה Eternal One Who reigns supreme Before creating anything When all creation serves your will Then truly your name will be King And God is one alone unique for all the life, the only root with no beginning and no end. God's mighty rule is absolute. Yeshua's my redeeming God, my rock when in my grief I fall, my banner and my refuge keep, who answers every time I call. To God I give my soul and trust whenever day and night appear. And when my soul still leave this earth, God will be with me. I'll not fear. When all shall end, the God's reign shall still extend in endless story. God was, God is, and God will be in everlasting glory. God is one and long unique for all the life, the only root with no beginning and no end. God's mighty rule is absolute. Yeshua's my redeeming God, my rock when in my grief I fall, my banner and my refuge key, who answers every time I call. To God I give my soul in trust whenever day and night appear. And when my soul still leave this earth, God will be with me. I'll not fear. אדון עולם אשר מלאך בטרם כה יציר נברא לעת נסע וחפצו כה אז אין מלך אז אין מלך שמו אדון עולם אשר מלאך בטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נסע וחפצו כל עזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עומד והוא יחיה בתיתרה ואחרי ככלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עומד בתפארה והוא היה והוא עומד Blessed be your holy name, O Lord of the universe, in Yeshua's name, Amen. We will praise the King of Israel, Yeshua, who came to die for our sins and rose from the dead for our forgiveness, who is Redeemer of all of Israel and all of the world. And we will praise your name. <laughs> Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Melech Israel, Le'olam Ba'el. Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, 
We will lift you up and praise your name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your holy name, King of all Israel. Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech. Melech Israel, Melech Israel, Leolam Baer. Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Yeshua Melech, Melech Israel, Melech Israel, Leolam Baer. Siman, Siman Tov, Oy, 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 Mazel, Mazel Tov. We will lift you up and praise your name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your holy name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your holy name, King of all Israel. Sim, 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 shalom, sim, 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 shalom, sim, 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 shalom, toba ubaracha. Siman Siman Tov, oh yo yo mazel mazel Tov. We will lift you up and praise your name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your holy name, King of all Israel. We will lift you up and praise your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Happy Passover. Happy Pesach. Hak Sameach. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, friends. Normally we have a much more interactive service, but due to the coronavirus, we will meet online. As such, I'm going to try to share some of my insights and notes on Leviticus and particularly on the first segment and then see where we go I pray that you'll turn to your favorite book uh, if not you can join the Levitical choir because that's the book that we're gonna study this is a significant book that almost all conservative scholars whether Jewish or Messianic or Christian regard as most or from the pen of Moses uh, he wrote the five books of Moses uh, without him there is little understanding of the rest of the Bible it explicitly states that he wrote certain events down Exodus 17 verse 14 or Numbers 33 2 and that and it is through him that the law came Exodus 24 and Exodus 34 27 it also explicitly says that he wrote the song of Moses and later on he records a, a psalm as well uh, but that goes beyond our purposes and even Yeshua saw that he was the author uh, we see that in Matthew 19 verse 7 or Matthew 22 24 and in uh, Mark and in John as well 
he is considered the author and so we're not going to muck around with that we'll, we'll just accept that for what it is but be aware that some people don't uh, think it is now the book wasn't called leviticus that comes from the greek levitical meaning relating to the levites now that's that's right but not quite right uh, from that uh, Leviticon we get Leviticus so that makes sense but in Hebrew it is called Vayikra and he called that's what Vayikra means and so it's when the Lord called to Moses and said let's have a discussion about how you can come and worship in the Talmud it's called Torah Kohenim the law of the priests or the instructions to the priest to the Kohenim Both names are problematic. Uh, he called is very nondescript. Uh, Leviticus and Torah Konim is more descript, so that makes sense. But much of this relates not just to the priest, it relates to all Israel. And so we got to remember that while it's specifically given over to the Levites and a subsection thereof, the Kohenim, uh, it is really much more beyond. There are only a few sections that especially are for the priest, chapters 21, 22, but much of it relates much broader because it is the code of holiness that is within here and that applies to all. Uh, both Jews and Gentiles today should learn from this. As a whole, the book as a genre, we would say it is a legal document because it relates to the rituals in a legal manner these are the ways you should do and come before me and if you don't these are the consequences now there are some narratives within this chapters 8 to 10 and uh, chapter 24 has a short section those are important but because that most people read Genesis they read Exodus and when they come to Leviticus they stop reading because it is just legal code it is difficult but within this legal code we can see how God is telling us to live holy and how to live a covenantal lifestyle and have a covenantal relationship because at the basis of all this of all these laws and, and decrees that God gives throughout here is a covenantal relationship the covenant is the most significant thing that we will understand once we understand how to live that covenantal relationship, how to live that covenantal lifestyle, we would be called a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Leviticus 26.5 or Exodus 19.6. God is calling us to holiness and covenantal lifestyle. As to the date, well, traditionally the dating is around 1445 before the common era uh, that's when Israel was about uh, the time when Israel was on the mountain or near the mountain uh, Mount Sinai and so as they came to the foot of Mount Sinai God gave it to them and so this is that period uh, he then tells them to make the tabernacle and this starts off with the tabernacle because the first thing that God calls Moses to in Leviticus 1 verse 1 then the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him and said uh, from the tent of meeting saying speak to the sons of Israel so what we see is that the tabernacle is already established uh, the census has taken place so there, there are some significant things that where we see overlap with Exodus and with the book of Numbers but this here comes that that setting uh, that forms the basis of the covenantal relationship and holiness now those two short stories that are found within here in chapters 8 to 10 and 24 uh, are significant because during Israel's time at the foot of Mount Sinai uh, these things uh, happen now Israel is obviously the original recipient of this significant letter or significant document probably is a better word 
but it in specifically it's the Exodus generation, the generation that came out with Moses out of the e out of Egypt, out of the land of bondage. And so this is therefore the central document for us that follows in that footstep. Now the central verse of the whole of the book is found in chapter 20 verse 26. You shall be holy to me, for I am holy. I am the Lord your God, I am holy. Um, and I've separated, keyword, you from amongst all the people, that you should be mine. Now specifically that was given to the Exodus generation, but applies to all Israel. If we are holy, you shall be holy. God separates, and it's that, that same root word, he separates us to himself. But in the new covenant that's the same if we are in Yeshua it is he who sanctifies me not I who sanctify myself but he sanctified me and so I should walk in holiness I should walk separate from the world so that I can be his now once I'm separated I can be in relationship and there is much in terms of the covenantal relationship with the nation of Israel, with God. But it is a very limited access. Within the tabernacle, only the priest could come in. It's very limited. Uh, in the morning and in the evening, in the morning you would see one priest going in for the lights, another one for the altar of incense. And on the Shabbat there would be one that changes the bread and there may have been one to take off the bread, one to put on the bread, but it's very limited. So out of all the people of the world, one nation, out of that one nation, one tribe, out of that tribe, one family, out of that family, uh, essentially only a couple of people go in and then they only go in to the holy place, not even the holy of holies. That is only done once a year. From the time of Moses, 1450 will make it simple for me, I'm mathematically challenged, all the way to the time of Messiah, excluding a few years of the exile, it's basically 1400 years, 1400. It meant very limited access, so the average Jewish person could not come in. And therefore his relationship with God was a tiered relationship. I, as a normal person, would relate to the priest, who would relate to the high priest, who would relate to God. It is difficult. As such, in a new covenant, when Yeshua came and he tabernacled among us and we beheld his flesh, suddenly we could touch him. Today we have his spirit that is upon us and indwells us. And so there is a much more significant personal connection with the Holy God that there wasn't at the tabernacle time. Nevertheless, he still is holy and how can a sinful person in, in living amongst a sinful people be in fellowship with a holy God this is what Leviticus is all about that whole coming holiness and the unholy person how they come together and the way they came together was through the sacrificial system and so the sacrificial system is key in terms of understanding the older testament the book of leviticus in particular but also our own lives because we too don't come without a sacrifice a proper understanding of leviticus will help and correct our thinking in terms of sacrifice israel's sacrificial system was not designed to gain favor with god no the, the nation already had been redeemed by grace and they had been put together as a nation uh, by the Lord and they were considered God's firstborn son on a national basis, Exodus 4.22. What was needed was a point of meeting, a fellowship 
that could not be established without grace, without being redeemed. But it was not designed to gain a favor from the Lord. Secondly, Israel's sacrificial system was not like that of the surrounding nations. There are similarities, but there are significant differences. This wasn't served to appease God or to manipulate him so that he would do something. No, Israel was created and destined to experience their God. They would see and walk with God. So there was a real difference. This was not one of the mystery religions. So the worshipper came, and if he came by faith through grace, and that's old and new covenant together, if he came by faith, his offering would be acceptable. It would be a devotion to God. And they would experience God's forgiveness. The central message is that Israel could approach God in the appropriate way through the appropriate sacrifice, through the appointed priest at the appointed place. Then they could enjoy fellowship with him. And so God is giving us instructions here on how to meet him. It was many years ago that I spoke a message in a congregation, in a predominantly Gentile congregation. And after I had finished, the minister, the pastor said to me, that's all Old Testament stuff. I know you threw in a bit of new covenantal stuff, but that's all old stuff that we don't need that anymore. I don't even read it. I was shocked because this is too significant. I asked him if I then could have his old covenant, but he wouldn't give it to me. He recognized there was something in it. You see, there are three little things that I just want to point out. It helps us understand the sacrifice of Yeshua and how he fulfilled the sacrificial system. So it, understands, it helps us understand the sacrifice and how he fulfilled the system. And it helps us understand holiness. Now the book of Leviticus had probably the greatest impact on Judaism, more so than any other book in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament. Because this is the first book that Jewish kids live. And this is considered the most significant book. There are probably half of the, the commentaries that are found in the Talmud or, or that are connected to it. They, they come from this book. So it is a serious book to study. Well, with that as a background, let me read to you some verses from the book. From chapter 1. Then the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When any man of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of an animal from the herd or the flock. He is to offer a burnt offering. Sorry, if, this, if his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer it, a male without defect. He shall offer it at the door way of the tent of meeting that he may be accepted before the Lord he shall lay his hands on the head of the burnt offering and it shall be accepted for him and he shall make atonement on his behalf and he shall slay the young bull before the Lord and Aaron's sons the priests shall offer up the blood and sprinkle the blood around the altar that is at the doorway of the tent of meeting and then he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put on fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall arrange the pieces, the head and the sword over the head, which is on the fire that is on the altar. Its entrails, however, and the legs, he shall wash it with water 
and the priest shall offer up in smoke all of it on the altar for burnt offering an offering by fire of soothing aroma to the Lord but if his offering is from the flock of the sheep or of the goats for a burnt offering he shall offer it a male without defect he shall slay it on the side of the altar northwards before the Lord and Aaron's sons the priest shall sprinkle the blood around the altar he shall cut it into pieces with the head and its suits and the priest shall arrange them on the wood and it's which is on the fire that is on the altar the entrails however and the legs you shall wash with water as the priest shall offer all of it and made up an offering sorry and offer it in smoke upon the altar it is a burnt offering an offering by fire of soothing aroma to the Lord but if his offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds then he shall bring his offering from the turtle doves and from the young pigeons the priest shall bring it to the altar and wring off its head and offer it in smoke upon the altar and its blood shall be drained on the sides of the altar he shall also take away its crop with the feathers and cast it beside the altar eastwards towards the place of the ashes and he shall tear it by the wings but he shall not suffer it and the priest shall offer it up in smoke on the altar on the wood which is on the fire it is a burnt offering by fire of soothing aroma to the Lord the burnt offering which is essentially chapter 1 is the basic offering that was to be made in this offering the worshiper expressed their devotion and their dedication to the Lord a worshiper could never come empty-handed and this was considered the basic offering later on when he talks about the meal or the flower offering which the poor could bring this would then be merged with another offering so all offerings had some blood either directly or indirectly but most of them had it directly and note that the worshiper who had come in faith to surrender to the Lord he offered a bull or a male goat or a lamb as a personal substitute for him he was the one that had to kill the animal if you're like me and you've never worked in an abattoir in a butchery you will never have done this this is a, a different kind of thing and it is perhaps strange to us why would God want all this blood yet with the blood God covers and that is a key word he will make atonement kippur uh, kapara kippa all of those words are related to the word for covering I'll come back to that in a second but note who did it he shall kill the bull it's the worshiper that kills the animal it's the worshiper not the priest the priest would assist so that the animal wouldn't suffer the priest would do the heavy work of the skinning and cut the animal up but it's the worshiper who would offer the death blow so to speak because this was his sacrifice this was in place of him not in place of the priest therefore he had to bring it each individual Jew who brought an offering would need to kill his own animal the priest would instruct he would be there to help if it was needed and he would make sure that the animal didn't suffer this happens in the presence therefore of the priest at the tabernacle at the tent of meeting it was a solemn time yes a lot of animals got killed but it wasn't a wild uh, uncontrolled crowd no this was this was done in order both so that the animal didn't suffer but also the person didn't suffer God wanted the, the life of the animal and the life is symbolized by the blood this would make atonement for you and it's that word kippur kapara kippa all of those words it is very common in the book of leviticus over 50 times i believe and so aaron's sons would then 
take or receive the blood and they would sprinkle the blood around the brazen altar this is at the front at the entrance of the tent of meeting and so only the priest would go past this now it is likely that they had some altars there or some not altars tables is probably the better word some tables where the offering would be skinned rather than work on the ground the priest then skinned the burnt offering and cut it into pieces the sons of Aaron then arranged the fire and they would burn if it was from a lesser a smaller animal it could be brought a bird if somebody was poor and then it would be uh, not torn off the wings but it would be a partial but still there would be a burnt offering aspect to it if you just pause for a minute and think that through have you ever seen that much blood have you ever seen an animal killed I, I don't necessarily recommend it it is it is gross is the word that comes to mind yet at the same time it helps us understand that this died in my place because I am the sinner I should have died I am a bloody mess forgive the expression what about us we too need to surrender to the Lord for we too are an offering uh, we must put all that we are and have on the altar and should not hold back we find that in the book of Romans let me just turn there in the book of Romans chapter 12 and the Shaliach Shaul the Apostle Paul writes this therefore I urge you brethren and it's the same for sister and for brothers and sisters for those that are in Messiah by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is your spiritual service of worship friends he's calling you and me to present our whole life our bodies as a living sacrifice and holy that key word from that book so that we may become acceptable to God he's already sanctified us but we now have to live out that sanctification he set us apart so that we become acceptable but that's because he is but how do we live that out is what Paul is talking about and this is our spiritual surface or our rational surface of worship and as we come before the Lord this is required from us to be living sacrifices and holy sacrifices at that point we can yield ourselves wholly totally to the Lord the ritual of the offering which was spelled out in Leviticus 1 could not be changed we couldn't one day go in and say you know what uh, I've got a different kind of animal I would like to bring or uh, how about you priest can you sacrifice it or let me bring somebody else who can do this the sacrifices were very strict male animals from the herd or from the flock could be a bird but it had to be brought in a specific way and specific animals kosher animals could be brought the worshiper had to bring it himself to the door of the tabernacle where it was examined by the priest is this a clean animal is this without spot and blemish is this a holy acceptable sacrifice he had to kill it it was his substitute the priest then would take it sprinkle the blood there would be atonement there would be forgiving uh, forgiveness because of the blood it would then be burnt up as a whole burnt offering upon the brazen altar we see that same explained in Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13 we must always give our best to the Lord 
there was a short period of time in the book of Malachi where you see that they didn't always bring the best but we can't do that Malachi chapter 1 verses 6 to 14 if Yeshua is our Messiah and he is and he is the sacrifice without spot and sorry without blemish and without spot 1 Peter 1 and so he is how much more so should we live a life that is holy and dedicated to the Lord that is our reasonable service just as he himself dedicated himself completely to God and surrendered himself fully how much more should we friends I hope this illuminated your study a little bit may the Lord bless us as we study his word Selah It is customary for us to say the ironic benediction so let me say that and if you know it in Hebrew or in English say it with me Yeparecha Adonai Fiyishmarecha Yair Adonai Panafelecha Vihunecha Yesa Adonai Panafelecha Vyasem Lecha Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. We pray that in the name of our Messiah Yeshua, the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Friends, we want to thank you for your prayers and for your support to this ministry, both in the Torah and Deuteronomy 15 says that the people gave freely and not grudgingly in second corinthians in chapter 9 paul writes god loves a cheerful giver and so friends feel free not to give but feel free to give and so i want to thank you personally for those who are able to give for your donation uh, to brit Harasha. it's an honor on our side and it's enabling us to fulfill the mission to which we are called. So friends, thank you for your support in Yeshua's name. We hope you enjoyed uh, your visit at Brit Hadassah. We are a unique fellowship made up of Jews and Gentiles who believe in Yeshua as the promised Messiah of Israel. We are committed to celebrating our faith in Yeshua in a way that reflects our spiritual and Jewish heritage. In the good news, as recorded by John, a Jewish man exclaimed, We have found him whom Moses and the prophets have written, Yeshua of Nazareth. And this is our testimony to you as well. If you don't know the Messiah, if you are seeking the Messiah, please make contact with us. Please go to our website, www.bcsydney.com and make direct contact with myself or Paul Cohen. This has been a real pleasure having the first streaming exercise and we, myself and Zelda, pray blessings on you and your family and all your friends. We say this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.